Thanks for the intro. I wanted to say that the timing of this presentation is really very, very special because September is International Literacy Month. So as of two days from now, will be an International Literacy Month. And you all know that Rotary has six areas of focus, one of which is basic education and literacy. So what I'm talking about is one of the six primary areas of focus of the club that you're representing today. So it's an important element. Um, International Literacy Month is something that was started by UNESCO uh, 40, 50 years ago or something like that. The International Literacy Day, they specify a day, is September 8th. So it's just, you know, a week away is International Literacy Day. And I, I hope that um, <coughs> if we have any uh, educators in the crowd, <laughs> that uh, you know, maybe uh, we could uh, put, some <laughs> put some emphasis on that. Um, so the question then comes, what can local Rotarians do about literacy or illiteracy? Well, first of all, it is estimated that there are 145,000 people in Bergen County that cannot read beyond the third or fourth grade level. It is the National Assessment of Adult Literacy estimates that 16% of our population <coughs> lacks basic skills. Now, what can you do in this highly literate community in which we live? Project Literacy is the only community-based organization that offers free one-on-one -on -one tutoring to the less literate. We provide one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We have about 160 students. We're based in Hackensack. Um, 160 students, we have 125 volunteer tutors, which we train, by the way. We do all the training. We have licensed tutor trainers. But what does that mean? We've got a, a deficit there of anywhere, depending on the time, 30, 40, 50 students to, to, to tutors. So we're always looking for tutors. And we have, um, the tutor ratio is about two thirds to one third woman to male. And it's about the same ratio of, uh, I say, more mature individuals. We don't get old, we just progress through life and mature. So about two thirds of them are more mature, shall we say. Um, and uh, a lot of them, but not all of them, are retired teachers. We have a lot of wannabe teachers who spent their career in business and retire and want to go out and, um, and start doing teachers. This, you find this on your table. This is who we are. Um, take a look at it, please. You also have on the table this, which take a little bit of study. Take it home if you're at all interested. And look at the statistics. This, these are nationwide statistics put out by an organization called Pro Literacy, which is in Syracuse, and it's kind of a uh, the kind of an umbrella organization for all the literacy organizations throughout Literacy Volunteers of America. Anybody ever heard of Literacy Volunteers of America? Uh, it's one of the big affiliates throughout the country, and we are the local affiliate in, in Bergen County. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're like the Red Cross. We're all part of one organization. We're all independent organization. We are a 501c3. I say we because I run it uh, in Hackensack. <coughs> uh, so what you can do to help is obviously write a check or you can volunteer to tutor or if you know someone who's interested in tutoring, we're always, always looking for tutoring. And tutoring is again is one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, tutors and students meet about an hour and a half a week or more often if they want to. Some of them uh, really go crazy and they meet more often than that. Some tutors have more than one student, but uh, we are located in the Chiarco Learning Center in Hackensack, which is on the premises of the Berg Community College campus in Hackensack. And they do classroom tutoring, education, it's not tutoring, they do classroom. So they don't want us to have more than two people working with a tutor because it starts to look like a classroom and they're competing with them. Well, that's nonsense, but that's what they want. Um, so we, our specialty is basic adult education, 
free tutoring. Um, and there's something else I want to quote. And this is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which just came out within the past couple of months. Now, excuse me for reading it, if I can. Uh, the key to ensuring future U.S. economic growth is to bring traditionally marginalized and underemployed adults into the workforce. 14% of adults in the United States struggle with low reading, writing, and basic math skills. This includes adults who have less than a high school education, former prisoners, and non-native English speakers. So there's a, there's a big push um, to, 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 uh, to, to, to increase the literacy level of, of the workforce. And I can tell you that we, we do some work with Hackensack Hospital, and they called us over, and did, you know, we're a small organization, but they called us over and said, you know, we, we, we now require that all new employees get a high, have a high school diploma and that anybody that's on the payroll that doesn't have one, they've got to get one. So we're looking for someone to do tutoring for, uh, for those employees. And I said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll give that a, uh, a shot. How many do you have? Uh, about 250, 300, you know. So I said, no, forget it. That's really is, is, is overwhelming. But the fact is, um, organizations are requiring a high school uh, diploma. We do ESL. Basic adult literacy, which is reading, writing, and arithmetic, and then we do math preparation for the high school equivalency, uh, high school equivalency, which they used to call the GED, now called the high school equivalency, wow. and we do preparation for the math portion of the uh, high school equivalency. Um, we have, as I said, 150, 160 students from over 40 countries. Um, the third highest per national percentage of total is Korean. Yeah. The second highest percentage of total is Turkish. And uh, we've changed our approach a little bit, uh, how we call things, because we talked about, you know, we have a lot of immigrants, uh, recent immigrants who come to us. Well, these are refugees. These are not only immigrants, but they are refugees from Syria and from Turkey. And some of the stories are very, very sad. Families have been broken up. And the people from Turkey in particular are professionals. We have college professors, economists. We have one guy, I don't know who the uh, travel guru on American television is, but he was the host of the travel show on Turkish television. And he got thrown out of the country. So there's a big purge going on in Turkey, and we're getting a lot. But they're professional, they're intelligent, but they don't speak English. You know, you have uh, an economics professor at some university who's bagging groceries in Acme or something of the sort. It's, it's, it's really sad, but what we have, another thing we've done <clears throat> is we took uh, half a dozen of the best ESL students from Bergen Community College. Now, these are students, which means they themselves are immigrants <clears throat> studying English with ESL. And we made the, we took the best from the, based on what their teacher said and used them as tutors for our students. So we would have um, a young woman from Colombia, for example, sitting face to face with a middle aged woman from Syria. Um, and that's really kind of neat, I think. Uh, that's, that's truly the, the melting pot. Um, what else can I say? There are some facts, for example, I'll give you some facts. Uh, low, lit low health literacy is estimated to cost between 106 billion and $236 billion each year in the United States. Wow. And it's, it's astronomical. 77 million Americans have only a two and three chance of correctly reading nutrition facts, prescriptions, over-the-counter drug labels, or understanding their child's vaccination report. Health literacy is incredible. Because if, if you can't read anything, or you read poorly, and the doctor gives you a prescription, and you take it to the drugstore and they give you the, you have to know, do I, how many pills do I give? One a day, two a day? Do I do it with, without food? Um, what dosages? And if you don't know that, and you have children, uh, it's, it's health literacy is extremely important. And they also say that low literacy uh, costs 225 billion each year in non-productivity in the workforce. Crime, loss of tax revenue due to unemployment. You have to be able to read danger signs in the, in the, in the, in the factory. You have to be able to read uh, warning signs. And one of my favorite stories, one of our students 
Anastasio, who was a lumberjack from Italy. You can imagine lumberjacks from Italy, but there's northern Italy, a lot of mountains and woods. He got arrested in the courthouse when he first arrived because he went through a door that said, do not enter. And they arrested him. Well, he now works for Kramer in, uh, in Hackensack. He's doing very well. He's working on his uh, driver's license and he's taking lessons from us. But that's the kind of problem that, that can exist. And, the, and the, maybe the one that scares me the most is it is said that one out of 10 drivers that you encounter on the road cannot read the road signs. That's a little, that's a little, yeah. a little scary. Um, we, have, we have some students who pay it forward. They, they learn from us and they, get, they quote unquote graduate from our programs. And then they go out and they try to do the same thing for others. And that's really very rewarding to us. Now, um, I want to have a little bit of fun. You mentioned dictionaries. Do you do the dictionary project? Do you ever have any leftovers? Yes, all of them. Good. I'll, I'll take them all. Seriously. Because we give them to our students. We sell them for $50 each, but these students We give them to our students because it's the. the yeah, that'd be, I'll give you my card and you know. Um, uh, because that is really, really good for uh, an immigrant going for um, citizenship or basic education because as you know, it is not only a dictionary, it is also an almanac because at the front you've got all the, all the, the dictionary and in the back you have the presidents, the states, the countries, the metric system, everything. Um, pass these around if you would please. English is said to be maybe the most difficult language in the world. I want you to take a look at this. <coughs> Tell me what you think of this. English is the most difficult language in the world. My daughter now teaches at Patterson, along with my son. We talk about it a little bit. Seven, 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 seven. I don't know. I know they're heavy in the Midwest. Okay. You left them over here? Clifton, I think. Yeah. Emmy, my name. Emmy, is there a Turkish Say again? Clifton. Clifton? Yeah. A lot of Clifton, I think. Yeah. yeah. Marvelous people. Um, which is not to say that others, our other students are not. But these are, um, a lot of our women students come from countries where they were not allowed to be educated. Yeah. Africa, Afghanistan, countries like that. So they come in absolutely cold. They, uh, and, and they make wonderful, wonderful, wonderful progress. And it's great to see their progress. I'm gonna give you this one also, and I'm gonna ask that, you all know what this is. You know what mm -hmm. this is? You've seen this? Okay. Right. Do not turn it over until I ask you to. Oh. <laughs> Who's going to sneak and turn it over? I know some of this. Don't turn it over. All right. Don't turn it over. You're going to do two tables for me? See if you have enough. You all know the four-way test. You better know the four-way test. You're supposed to know the four-way test. All right, now, turn it over. I see he turned it over. Oh, four-way test. Oh. All right, now, turn it over. Turn it over and read that. Now you can turn it over. And why do you think people get confused? They should have known it's in high school, that's why I do good this school. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my good That's right. It was good. Exactly. Okay. We're all worried about it. Well, you're not that fast.
No, that's, that's a little bit of a little bit of fun. But <coughs> the point is that literacy often takes back seat to other serious needs like homelessness and hunger. Sir, I was going to be fine. Good. That was a joke. <laughs> no, literacy often takes a back seat to uh, different important needs like health. Uh, health matters, um, homelessness, hunger relief, all of which are extremely important. But if you can't read, you can't look, you can't understand nutrition facts. So much reading just um, changes a person's life. It revolutionaries, revolutionizes a person's life uh, and allows them to become contributing members of their community. Spot. It's just that simple. And when you think that there are 145,000 of your neighbors who can't read in this area, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, you teach that to your kids, all right? Mm -hmm. You're going to take that to first period? Yeah, I'll hang it up in the classroom, actually. It's kind of funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on, <laughs> we, uh, but I'd, I'd like to know if there are any questions. Uh, <clears throat> I'd also like to know if um, you can help us find tutors, because we do need volunteer tutors. Uh, we do the, we do the training. Hmm? Is everything done down in Hackensack? Not everything is done in Hackensack, and that's, I think, one of the uh, really neat things about our program is there's no start date or finish date. We don't have semesters or sessions like that. A person comes in and says, I want a tutor. We screen them. We set them up with their tutor, and their kickoff day is whatever it is now. Students stay with us on average about 15 months, some longer, some shorter. So just for discussion, let's say 15 months now uh, is when they should be finished. Every student comes with a goal, and that's one of the things we ask every student when they come in. What is your goal? I want to become a citizen. I want to get a better job. I want a promotion. Uh, I want to be able to read to my children, this sort of thing. Uh, and we, the, the tutors, and then we have some assessors, people who uh, outside, but the professional evaluators, assessors, who come in every six months or so and evaluate the progress that the, the students are making. And when the student says, I think I've met my goal, if the tutor and the assessor agree, then they're out. Could be 15 months, could be 20, could be less. Uh, but everybody has to have a goal, and they, the idea is to meet the goal. That's why we don't have semesters because it's, it's very fun. Um, and teachers and students determine where and when they're gonna meet. If tutor says, uh, I can't meet Thursday mornings because I've got rotary, um, how about you? Um, the student will say, well, I'm working at Stop and Shop until three, can we meet after three? Um, and I, you know, I work five days a week, but not on, Wednesday and Thursday. Sorry, all right, let's meet Wednesday afternoon um, at four o'clock, and we can do it at Hackensack, or where do you live? Well, I live in, in Oakland. Uh, let's see, why don't we do it at the Brick House? We'll have a beer. No. Um, <laughs> why don't we do it uh, somewhere in between? So the, the student and the tutor decide where and when they're gonna meet. It's not like you have to come to Hackensack or you have to go here. It's anywhere you wanna meet. And a lot of them do come to Hackensack. You provide a tutorial for the teachers. Oh yes, we do. We provide uh, one of our one of our guys is, is a licensed tutor teacher, whatever they call him. I don't know. Sure. Trainer, t tutor, trainer. He can he's he's licensed to do that because you have to get licensed to do this sort of thing. And um, there are two ways to do it. If you're a retired teacher or you have tutoring experience, you get fast tracked. Mm -hmm. We say these are basic rules of the road, you know, uh, around here. And, and they take off. But otherwise, if you're coming out of business, for example, there are five sessions, uh, one a week for five weeks, uh, in Hackensack, um, where for, for tutor training, hour and a half, two hours. So it's, it's pretty intense, and it's a tutor training uh, program that is basically stems from pro literacy, uh, uh, which does a lot of this sort of thing, uh, training things. Sir, there's not much of a commitment. Hours. Hour and a half a week with a student because there's some, some prep time. There's some prep time. So you got to figure hour and a half with a student. And a lot of people, they do it really, really seriously. They come in with pictures and 
cards and all kinds of things. And some just sit down with their books. Uh, it's all, you know, it's all very well done, but you got an hour and a half a week um, with a student and whatever time it takes to prep, um, you know, your lesson. Um, how many tutors do you have? How many? How many tutors do you have? Right now, uh, I think I took the uh, latest numbers. It changes all the time. It changes every month. Um, about 160 students and 125 tutors. So there's a there's a gap in there of mm. shortfall. But as I said, how you, you got know, your student? Mm -hmm. How you got the student? How do we get the students? The student, yeah, the, yeah. Students all come on referral. A lot of them ah. come from Bergen Community College because we're right there in the building. I see. And um, they need you know some reinforcement for their studies. But a lot of them it's word of mouth also. In the Turkish community, it's, it's all word of mouth. They're just walking in. Less now than they were uh, half a year, a year ago. Mm. I had one guy, and one guy, good, four minutes. And one guy, Turkish, came in, and he had, um, he was driving a friend's car in Emerson, got pulled over, and he, the, the friend's car did not have the insurance card in it. So he got ticketed for not having an insurance card. And he got ticketed, I think, for lane change or something like that. This is a Turk. A Turk and he was, he, was, he, was an, he was a professional. He was an intellectual. But he didn't speak any English. And he came into me one day. He just looked terrified. And he told us about it. Because we're social workers. All these, anybody who's done nonprofit work, you know you're basically social workers regardless of what you're doing. He came into us. Um, I said, I got these tickets, what do I do? You know, I don't speak English. So he said, we, we called up the police, the court, changed his date, got him an interpreter, and he went through you know, and paid his fine. But the day he came in, he had his Turkish English dictionary, and he said, he's just oh, terrified. He said, you know, comes in, comes in, points to a word. He looks at me like this, and the word was prison. It was prison. I said, no, you're not going to go to prison for changing lanes. But, you know, they don't know that. They don't know that. But uh, that's the kind of thing, kind of thing we face. Yes, Sir. Talking about options, um, I, you mentioned something about the specific rules being applicable, medical, yeah. legal, and these is, do you have any guidance or these special things that this Lewis program does to help? Because it seems to me like take that 145,000 Yeah, well, uh, we have two trustees from Hackensack Hospital, and there are things called health toolkits. I don't know whether you've heard of a health toolkit. And different people put them out, and it's just, you know, a, a toolkit of what should be uh, taught in health literacy. Um, health literacy, literacy really revolves around how the user and the provider communicate. Because, you know, if, if, if the, the communicators, the physicians, for example, it's, it's Greek to all of us, most of it. And, and we have to make a lot of the, um, no? Make, make a lot of the, 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 the language understand, understandable. Because, yeah. Well, we could, we could. We, it doesn't come up because people want to learn how to speak the language. And if you, and we're going to have, for example, for financial literacy, we have a financial literacy seminar coming up mm -hmm. for our tutors uh, from Wells Fargo. Is doing it actually no. coming up in a couple of weeks, and we'll do one with health literacy also. That's right. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, um, does a person have to live in Bergen County? No, no. no. That's why we call ourselves Greater Bergen County. This is Yeah. And the kids are Mexican. Been here for five years. Yeah. He doesn't speak much English. He's shy. He doesn't speak well. They're, they're never going to get out of this. Mm. We have students from Passaic, from uh, Essex, from Hudson, and from Bergen County. And I'll, I'll finish with this one, one thought for what you're saying is what we can do and have offered to do is to train your staff to be tutors so that on site, in, in your in your facility, uh, you could say every Tuesday uh, we're going to have a session, and we will train your 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 staff 
to uh, to do the tutoring. 